first day of the year. Yes. And I say this is a great way to start off the year. Amen? Amen. 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 So let's stand and invite the presence of the Lord this evening. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time that we get to gather in your house to worship you on the first day of the year. Would you help this year to be a wonderful year in you? Would you help this church to be a light for you? Would you help us to grow spiritually this year? Would you help us right now in this service? In your name we pray. Amen. All right, remain standing as well. Pops, pops, comes <laughs> late. All right, two eleven, two eleven, and it is good to be in the Lord's house tonight. One of my favorite songs, and uh, I'm so glad that our souls can be free and that can be free and be praise God. Let's sing together.
Amen. You may be seated. Praise, God. Praise His name. Is your soul free tonight? Amen. Amen. Let's turn to number 71. Number 71. I will sing of my Redeemer and His wondrous love to me. Praise Amen. Him. situation and there's so many other emotions perhaps that 
you could respond with, but I want the tenor of my life. I want when I'm laying in a casket and people follow by, I hope they'll say he was like Jesus. That's what I want. Why don't you sing my little prayer? <laughs> adjustment that needs to be done that the blessed Holy Spirit comes in a sweet gentle way and helps us to know what we need to adjust and what we need what we need to correct and, and his Holy Spirit is so very faithful <clears throat> and I don't know about you but uh, maybe it ought to be a prayer of, of our hearts this coming year oh Lord conform me to the image of your son <clears throat> And I'm, I'm confident this evening, if, if that is our prayer, if that's our true desire and a willingness, a surrender in our heart to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, I'm convinced by the end of 2023, we will be more like Him as we work with the Holy Spirit. But we get into problem when we, when we begin to put the brakes on and when the Holy Spirit comes and begins to talk and deal and work with us and... And uh, we, we refuse that, that correction, that adjustment. We get into spiritual problems, but oh, I want, I want my life to be surrendered to the control of the Spirit. And as He speaks to my heart, I, I, I submit and I surrender to His control. Amen. I trust that's your desire to me. <clears throat> well, we're going to pray together in just a couple moments, but... So good to see each of you that are here in the service uh, this evening. And I failed to mention Aretha this morning, but Aretha's been gone for some time, so glad that she's here. So good to see Stacy Stein back there. She's had uh, quite, a, quite a stint of physical challenges lately, so glad that she's here this evening. So good to have uh, some extra people with the Quesenberries tonight. And so good to have Colin Martin here. So good to have uh, Autumn and uh, Mr. Ziegler. Caleb Ziegler back there. So glad to have them. And we're just glad each of you are here in the service tonight. We do want to pray together. And I'm going to ask Brother Lyle Witt if he will lead us in prayer in just a couple of moments. Several requests we made mention this morning. I'll highlight some of those again. We want to continue to remember uh, Brother Marvin Stamper. So we pray tonight. And uh, Scott was there this afternoon to see him. And I don't know if it was... Um, the anticipation or the hopes that Marvin had, or if the doctors are saying midweek, maybe he might be able to go home. And uh, we, we hope and pray that that's the case. Of course, you never want to leave a hospital too soon and, and then things spiral out of control. 
but, uh, but I know that uh, home sounds awful good. <laughs> so let's continue to pray for Marvin. The Lord would give him an encouraging touch and a physical touch. Let's also pray for Brother Sankey, ongoing uh, physical conditions. Uh, they texted me last night. He texted me last night said, I plan to be there in the morning. And then Sister Sankey texted me this morning and just said he is not up to it. A little bit of a setback. And so let's continue to pray for, for Brother Sankey. The Lord would give a physical touch and uh, that the Lord would encourage their hearts. And I know they so desperately long to be in church. And, uh, and so I want us to pray the Lord would encourage their, their hearts tonight. Continue to pray for Sister Witt's father, just, uh, <clears throat> just hanging on seemingly. And uh, the Lord knows all about that. And uh, so let's continue to pray for, uh, for the end of life for Sister Witt's father, 95 years old and a uh, Christian man, good Christian man. We're very, very thankful for that. Uh, let's, let's pray that uh, the crossing uh, would be easy. And I pray for the family that is behind that will be grieving. Let's also pray for Brother Winkler. He's facing surgery here shortly. Let's pray for him. The 17th. All right, January the 17th. Let's be praying. The Lord would give him special help as he faces that surgery. And then Linda Scott's brother in law, this is David Gilbert, um, attends the Frankfurt, or lives in Frankfurt area anyway. And uh, we want to pray for him. Had a stroke. They moved him from Frankfurt to Indianapolis area. And uh, I, I guess they were, they were, at least this morning, they were kind of waiting on an MRI. To determine whether or not they had to do a surgery um, and so not sure exactly how that is playing out but we want to continue to pray for for David Gilbert and thankfully although although it was a stroke um, not not significant damage connected with that is the speech is not altered um, no paralysis but seemingly has affected his brain that gives him the balance he needs and so um, struggling in that regard so I guess a mixture of praise and uh, a prayer for Brother David, thank the Lord it wasn't worse, but let's continue to pray for uh, David as we pray this evening. Sherry Martinoli uh, has a brother that has cancer. We want to remember Ken and her sister Patty. Uh, we, are, we are kind of shocked that she's still hanging on as well, but uh, let's continue to pray. The Lord would give physical touches to them. Tim Sedlicek is out today, not feeling well. We want to remember, uh, remember him. And uh, also, uh, the neighbor across the street here, many of you wouldn't know his name, but the Weddles would, obviously, but uh, Donnie Hodge's wife, uh, Kim, uh, was in correspondence, or, or maybe Donnie was in correspondence with Daryl over the Christmas time. Daryl, I think, had texted him and wished him a Merry Christmas, and he had said something back about his wife, Kim's brother, uh, giving him a diagnosis of six, six weeks or six months. I'd have to look at my text again to remember exactly what it was, but... Um, just coming down to the end, and so I want us to pray for uh, for that that connection, and the Lord would give special help. And then uh, Vicky Coons also tells me that her coworker, a lady by the name of Vicky Lewis, lost her mother today, and so we want to remember that family who is grieving as well this evening. Are there any other spoken requests that I've not mentioned tonight that uh, you have in your heart that you would like to share at this time? Any spoken request that you might have? <clears throat> All right. Yes, Tyler. Um, the motel I was staying at um, completely shut down the day after Christmas without notice, and it forced everyone to leave. There's probably over 300 people there forced to leave. Right. So uh, just pray that um, something else will open up. All right. Let's pray for Tyler. These unexpected bends in the road and. God knows all about that. Let's let's help Tyler pray about that. And that circumstance. Pray for Alyssa and Ted and Wicks across the street as well. They're going through a really hard time right now. <clears throat> all right. The lady across the street contacted Sherilyn and, and then apologized. She said, "Oh, I'm sorry. I'm venting." <laughs> but just going through a difficult time. So let's pray for uh, for them this evening. <clears throat> Any other spoken requests that you have on your heart and mind that you'd like God's people to help you bear that burden? Let's remember, remember our nation, and would it be wonderful if 2023 was a year of a widespread revival across this land? <clears throat> Not just this land, but global. Oh, we need a mighty moving of God's presence, and uh, let's pray. Uh, let, let's not just be so filled with doubt that we pray little. Let's have a faith that believes God. 
And uh, I don't know what God's plans are for this coming year, but let's uh, let's have faith. Let's pray big prayers. Let's trust God. Let's pray for a mighty moving of His Spirit across our world, across uh, this nation, this community, our movement, and the Burlington Church. Let's just pray that God will continue to do His work. I'm interested that He does His work among us. I'm not here to tell you what that looks like because I don't know exactly what ways God's going to move in 2023. But I just want Him to know He's welcome here. And I want His presence to be among us and do what He, what he wants to do in our midst. Maybe you have unspoken requests you'd like to mention. I know praise Him. Many needs represented by those uplifted hands. The Lord knows each of those as we... As we look to him in prayer tonight. Let's stand together. Allow it will lead us. Let's begin with praise. Let's find something to thank the Lord for. And let's bring our petitions to the Lord as he leads us tonight. Father, as we come before you tonight, we thank you for the privilege of approaching you as your children. Yes, Lord, we do thank, thank you. you for we have the opportunity of coming into tonight. your presence tonight. For the way that you came down so many years ago. Oh, we, we do thank you, Lord, that you're a God who's on the throne. To set us God, who hears, God who hears, God who answers. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to pray to inform you of anything. But, Lord, you already know, and yet you ask us to come boldly to your throne of grace, that we might receive grace and mercy in our time of need. And so, Lord, we do that tonight. We come boldly to your throne of grace, and we're in need of your touch. We're in need of your help. We're in need of your strength and your grace. Father, there are many needs that were mentioned tonight. You know, oh, each of these Lord, we bow in your presence. Father, I pray that you would we, Lord, be Lord, we want to, we want to exercise Lord. faith tonight. We don't want to be creatures of doubt or of unbelief. But, Lord, we want to believe you. We know that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask for. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are that kind of God. So, Lord, we bring these petitions to you. We bring these needs to you tonight, spiritual needs and physical needs, financial needs, emotional needs, and relational needs that all are represented here in this congregation tonight. Lord, if we knew all of the difficulties and all of the challenges and all of the setbacks and, and all of the things that are that are represented here in this sanctuary tonight, we would be overwhelmed. We would wring our hands. We don't know how to figure it all out. We don't know how to work it all out. But Lord, we thank you that our faith, our confidence is in you tonight. We can bring all of these needs and lay them at your feet. We can bring them to you, bring them to the foot of the cross. And ask, Lord, God, that your work would be done. Oh, Thank you, Lord, Lord that you while we would be overwhelmed, we would also be unsure of Jesus. what we of what to do and what the answer is, but God, we're so grateful that we can bring it to you and leave it in your hands. Father, as we ask that this year we think of the needs in our country. Oh, Lord, we ask that you receive us call service today. I pray that you would bring all of us. Would you bring us bring us together? Bind us together with words of love. Bind us together with words of unity. Bind us together, Lord, we pray for the advancement of your kingdom. But help us serve you, Lord God. Even now, even tonight, help our hearts to be surrendered to your spirit as you speak to us. Oh, Jesus, we ask the remainder of this service, Lord, be with those who sing, be with those who preach. May your word go forth, and may our lives be better than those of what you do here among us. Jesus' precious name. Bring glory to your name through all that you do. In Jesus' name. Praise you. Praise Praise God. As the ushers are preparing to come, I want to make a few announcements. We have the missions offering coming up very soon, in just a second. So you want to be prepared for that. Um, we're also having an ice skating uh, youth get together the 20th. So be uh, remembering that the 20th of this month, we're going to be having an ice skating. Uh, youth get together. The 22nd is Faith Builders Plus. That's going to resume. And so you don't want to miss that if you can be a part of that. And then the 27th through the 30th is the youth convention trip. 
I talked to the young people in the youth service a little bit about that. If you can uh, let me know soon if you are going to go and if you're going to ride the bus or however you're going to get up there, that'd be great. And we can plan for that trip. All right. I think that's all the announcements for this evening. Unless I missed anything or missing anything. You mentioned so, Wednesday night. Oh, yes. Wednesday night, Dr. Smith is coming for the month of January on our Wednesday nights to be giving a lesson, a topical lesson on living in the light of eternity. Living in the light of eternity. And that's going to be each Wednesday night of uh each Wednesday night of the month of January. So you don't want to miss that. He did that a year ago on Revelation, and that was an exciting time. So this month, he is going to do something similar. So that's going to be every Wednesday night of this month. All right. I think that's everything now. And the ushers can come now. Tonight is missions offering. We support three missionaries. If you have forgotten, they're in your bulletin. The Daniel Melton family. Wesley Cressman family and Jeremy and Esther Hopkins. And so when you give your offering tonight, you're giving to those families. And if you have your uh, pledges, if you've made a pledge for the missions offering, make sure you designate that on your check or however you get. All right. No, would you pray for us tonight? Dear God, thank you for this day. Bless this offering and bless the gift and give it to you soon. church, um, but uh, maybe something somebody would like to get involved with, and uh, that is Rita talked to me this afternoon, and of course, many of you know that she has put together a, um, a coloring book, and most of our kids, I think all of our kids should have received one by now, uh, thanks to, to Sister Rita for doing that. She also uh, gave us several, I, I'm not sure exactly how many it was, for the drive through Christmas program. And uh, we were able to pass it out as long as they lasted uh, to the people that came through, the community people that had children in their car. And so that was a great blessing as well. But uh, she is planning to, um, to she's had it translated into to Spanish. And so they are planning to have these available uh, for the, the medical missions trip in February. <clears throat> and uh, so she is 
Um, I think the cost is going to be about around $3,000, and that is just the cost of printing, and uh, that's, uh, that's not upcharging anything. That's just around the cost of printing, and they're having about 800 printed, and she's been in contact with Brother Melton, and uh, so they're going to pass those out during that medical br brigade or whatever they call it. And so I think that's going to be a huge, a huge blessing to the children there in Honduras, and so I just mentioned that. Uh, if anybody's interested in helping to support that, uh, you can give your money through EFM. It's not going to be through our church, but through EFM. If you want to designate an offering to help support that effort, you certainly can. And uh, you can give and contact EFM and make sure you designate it for, for that project. And I know that, that will be a great blessing. And a special thanks to Retha for, for putting this together, a wonderful evangelism tool uh, for the children. And I know it's going to be a great blessing uh, even in another country, not just America. So that's that's exciting. But I mention that just as a possibility if somebody's interested in giving in that in that regard. All right. Well, it's a joy to have the Quesenberry family here. They're going to come sing, and uh, I'm not sure how the piano is going to cooperate. But bear with us. But we hope it'll work, and uh, look forward to their ministry. The Lord bless them as they sing to. <clears throat> Well, my little girls have grown up to be young ladies, and I don't get the chance to sing with them very often. But we decided we'd go back to an old trail that we used to do sometimes together as a family. You know, the weather forecast for 2023 calls for a chance of storms, but lots of sunshine. And I'm thankful for his presence and his always with
doesn't promise us no storms, but he promises he'll be with us. Amen. So I'm very, very grateful for that reality and promise tonight. Thank you, Quesenberries, for that wonderful reminder. If you have your Bibles, we're going to look in Acts chapter 5 this evening. <clears throat> Drawn to this truth, Acts chapter 5. We'll be looking there in just a few moments. Often, the realities of life can so consume us. Isn't that a beautiful cry? Yes. <laughs> oh, churches have to have babies. Absolutely. Oh, that's beautiful. Don't ever worry about that. That's right. The realities of life can so consume us, we are prone to forget the purpose or the mission of our lives. As a Christian, you and I are on a mission. We have an assignment. It's a God-given mission to let our light shine in a world filled with darkness. And I hope in this message, this challenge tonight, to give us something that will encourage us to fulfill that God mission, God-given mission in 2023. We're going to focus tonight on verses 26 to 42, but of Acts chapter 5, but we're going to look quickly at the context. In verse 12, uh, Luke tells us that many signs and wonders were being done among the people by the apostles. You continue reading verses 14 to 16, communicate that uh, the multitudes of men and women were, were being added to the church. Many people were healed. Through this, we notice both the soul and body were being impacted by the church. Verse 17 introduces to us the hatred of both the, the Sadducees and the high priest toward the apostle, and they throw them into prison. Verse 19 gives us their miraculous escape. The angel of the Lord delivers them out of the hand, out of the hands of their persecutors, and tells them to go speak concerning Jesus in the temple. They do so, and when the authorities realize they were delivered from prison and were teaching in the temple, they show up. And that brings us to the scripture lesson I want to look at briefly tonight. Beginning with verse number 26 of Acts chapter 5, reads like this. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. And Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. <clears throat> then stood there up one of the council, a Pharisee, named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. And he said unto them, You men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a, a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain. And all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. Now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if I counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. Look at verse 39. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. 
And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. As I read this account, as I read this, this factual story from the book of Acts, my mind begins to think about this thought. A watching world. A watching world. Gamaliel, who was a man of wisdom serving on the Sanhedrin, reminded his colleagues of two men who both had a following, but they and their movement fizzled out. And in reflection of these two scenarios that Gamaliel remembers from his own lifetime, Gamaliel then reasoned with them. He said, let these apostles go, and if this work be of men, it too will fizzle like the others. It's not going to have any lasting effect. But he says, if it be of God, it doesn't matter what you do. You can't stop it. And when they heard his reasoning and agreed with his logic, they stepped back to watch. Would this be another movement that would fizzle? Would it, would it all take care of itself? Will this all just kind of dissipate and dissolve away and into the background? Or is it going to spread? And the world watched. And I think you can read from the book of Acts that it certainly didn't fizzle. They continued to impact their world in a remarkable way. In fact, if you move to the very next chapter in chapter 6 of Acts, it begins, and in those days, <clears throat> when the number of the disciples was multiplied. Isn't that fascinating? A watching world in Acts chapter 5, and you get to Acts chapter 6, and it says, in those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplied. It wasn't fizzling. In fact, you keep reading in verse 6. The next few verses record a business meeting of how they're going to handle the demands of a growing church. The world was certainly watching and the church was certainly spreading. And I would tell us this evening that we still have a watching world around us. They ask questions like this. Who are these people who, who are different? Who are these people <clears throat> who look different? Who are these people who are, who are standing up and defending the unborn and, and picketing the abortion clinic? Who are these people who are, who are feeding the hungry at the soup kitchens? Who are these people that are, that are visiting the imprisoned? Who are these that are going abroad preaching and sharing about Jesus? Who are these people who are standing up for truth? Well, it's the church. It's those who have been called out of their sins and they've made a choice to be a follower of Christ. It is the church that is making a difference in the world around them. Oh, friend, if we were somehow able to, to measure and watch, if we were able to extract the influence of the church from today's culture, this, you think our world's in a mess now. You think about the mess this world would be in without the influence of a church. The world is watching the church. I've shared this uh, in, other, in other places and I've shared it here as well. But in, in one of his many books, Philip Yancey tells about meeting a remarkable woman named Joanna who was from South Africa. She was a lady of mixed race, part black and part white, which was known in South Africa simply as colored. And as a student, Joanna was instrumental in the dismantling of the, the evil segregation that was found within the culture of which she lived. 
So she was very instrumental in that, in that endeavor. And following that, that noble success, instead of simply enjoying her newfound freedom, she, she didn't just sit down and twiddle her thumbs, but she became aggressively active in one of the most violent prisons in South Africa. It was the prison where Nelson Mandela had spent time incarcerated. And that particular prison was controlled by gang members that required new members to, to assault undesirable prisoners to gain admittance to their gang. <clears throat> it was a very, very uh, crooked and corrupt type situation. And I would tell you that unfortunately corruption is not just an inmate problem. But oftentimes the authorities would look the other way, letting inmates beat and even kill one another. And it's in this dreadful place that Joanna, where while she could have maybe felt like I've done my duty, I've done my assignment, I'm going to sit back and relax. Instead of that, she steps up and she sets her sight on this very prison. Joanna started her reforming efforts in this prison by going each day and offering these inmates the incredible message of, of forgiveness and reconciliation. In addition to that message of hope, she, she also instituted small groups. She taught them trust games and was eventually able to get them to open up and share about their life story. And you might wonder, you might wonder if Joanna's work was profitable, but here's the record I want you to get. The year before Joanna began visiting the prison, there were 279 acts of violence. The next year, there were two. Stark difference. Joanna had set her sights. She had decided to go in and make a difference, use her life as an example. <clears throat> and Philip Yancey at a Cape Town waterfront restaurant was interviewing Joanna and he prodded her for specifics on how she was able to transform the prison. And this is what Yancey, how he described it in his own way. He said, I quote, her fork stopped on the way to her mouth. She looked up and said, almost without thinking, well, of course, Philip, God was already present in the prison. I just had to make him visible. Isn't that a staggering thought? Just making God visible. I want to tell us tonight, this first Sunday of the new year, there's a watching world. A God that is already present. But you can make him visible. I'm reminded of several times in scripture. We're going we're gonna to go through these quickly. We're not going to spend a long time on them. But I'm reminded of several times in scripture when God becomes visible through human efforts. Let me give you a few examples. The first example I have is from the life of Nathan. You remember the, the story of, of David and Bathsheba? It's a, it's a tragic account in Scripture. He looks, he lusts, he commits adultery, he then lies to, to cover it all up. But do you remember what God does in that story? He sends Nathan the prophet to King David, doesn't he? You remember, you remember the story David gives him, or excuse me, Nathan gives a story about a rich man who, who was wealthy. He had all the sheep that he wanted, but instead of killing one of his own, he kills the one sheep of the poor man. And Nathan relays this story to David, and David is infuriated by this. He says that the man, the man that's done this, he should die. He should be killed for this. And Nathan, who is the man of God, points his finger at the king and he makes God visible. He makes God visible by saying, David, you are the man. <clears throat> and King David was confronted with his own sin. And the result was the humility and confession and repentance and restoration. All because God used the man Nathan to become visible why? God was already there. God was already in the palace. 
The sin was there and God knew all about it. But Nathan steps in and makes God visible and says, David, you're the man. And because of that, ultimate restoration took place. Because one man was willing to say, I'll become visible. Example number two, we move to Elijah. We think about that meeting on Mount Carmel between the prophets of Baal and Elijah, the man of God. The agreement was made <clears throat> that the God that answered by fire, he would be the true God. It's a, it's a fascinating story to read. It's a fascinating scene to watch. The prophets of Baal set up their altar. They cry out to their God. They jump on the altar. They hurt themselves, but no answer by fire. But then Elijah says, your turn's over. It's my turn. He repairs the altar. He digs a trench around it. He puts the wood and the bullock on the altar, saturates it with water to ensure no foul play. And he prays a simple prayer. And all of a sudden, the prophet Elijah makes God visible to a watching world. They had been watching the prophets of Baal. They'd been watching all of the rigmaroles that they were going through, doing all the things, trying to get their God to answer by fire. It was a watching world on that occasion. And Elijah steps forward with power and authority and God's presence on his life. And he prays a simple prayer. Verse 38 of 1 Kings says, Then the fire of the Lord fell consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And you remember what happened? The people responded. The watching world responded. The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. The watching world knew that there was a true God that answered by fire. There's another example. We could quickly move to Naaman's servant. You remember the story of how the Syrian army went out and brought back captives from Israel? And among those who were captured was an Israelite girl who, who served as a maid to the wife of Naaman, captain of the Syrian army. Naaman, Scripture tells us, was a leper. He was destined to die. But the unnamed servant girl remembered the ability of the God of her homeland. I guess she could have kept quiet, couldn't she? She could have maybe disguised. She could have camouflaged her religion, her knowledge of a true God. But instead, she approached him. She says, there is a God in Israel. And she made God visible to her master. And the rest is history. He goes to Israel. He eventually follows the prophet's orders. He's healed. That watching Syrian military family knew who was the true God. Because there was a little servant girl who said, I can make God visible in this situation. Let's do a couple more. We notice the disciples following Jesus' death and resurrection, he gives them a commission. The commission was basically to go into all the world, basically go into all the world and make God visible. He says, you're to make me visible in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the uttermost part of the world. And that's exactly what they did. Where they went is not always clear and often up to speculation. But they went a lot of places. Rome, Greece, Ephesus, Asia Minor, Ethiopia, Arabia, India. Mesopotamia. And most of them were probably martyred for making God visible. Their life ended as a sacrifice of blood for making God visible and pointing to a dark world, the light of hope. We find a fifth example in the life, in the book of Acts, in the life of Philip. It's in Acts chapter 8. Philip had been making God visible in Samaria. But God spoke to him and he told him, I want you to leave. I want you to go down from Jerusalem to Gaza. <clears throat> and he did as the Lord instructed him to do. And there he found an Ethiopian who had come to Jerusalem to worship, but was leaving and was sitting in the chariot reading Isaiah's prophecy. 
The Spirit told Philip to go get in the chariot with this man. Philip responds and obeys. He does as the Spirit asks him to do. And he asks the man, he said, do you understand what you're reading? And the man says, how can I unless someone helps me? So Philip is able to explain the scriptures. And in that chariot, he makes God visible to this man. And what happens? The man believes and is baptized. The final example I would mention tonight is not anyone from Bible or from the scripture. But the final example I would leave with you is you. God has called you to go to a world that's watching. They are watching. They're watching you at work. You clock off a little early or don't clock off during lunch. They're watching you at work. They're watching you at school. They're watching you at the family birthday party. They're watching you on vacation. They're watching you in the checkout line. They're watching how you react when the fast food restaurant got your order wrong. Watching you in the waiting room. They're watching you when you're under pressure. They're watching you when you're in pain. They're watching when you've been lied about. Oh, we could go on and on with this. They're simply watching you and I. And we have the opportunity, friends, in 2023 to make God visible. You say, Pastor Andy, how can I do that? Oh, it can happen in a million ways. Love the unlovable. Forgive the one who's difficult to forgive. Serve the unworthy. Bake a loaf of bread for your neighbor. Let someone know you're praying for them. Oh, there are so many ways that you can do it. But on this first day of the year, I just want to remind you, there's a world that's watching. And you have the opportunity to make God visible. I don't know what that's going to be for you and you and you. I don't know how that will always look for me. But the prayer of my heart is, Lord, would you make me visible? Would you make me visible in this world? Would you make God visible, excuse me, through me in this world that's watching? I believe he'll do that if we'll let him. I want us to stand together and we're going to close by singing the chorus. <clears throat> Similar to the chorus that Brother Rodney led in, but I had planned to close by singing chorus number 40. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wonderful passion to bear. If you need the chorus, it's chorus number 40. <clears throat> oh, thou spirit divine, all my nature refine, till the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Let's sing this in closing.
visible. Would you make yourself visible to a watching world through me in 2023? Amen. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you.